We had a huge week last week. A lot of stuff came down the pipeline. We took last week off, so we've got two weeks worth of stuff to give you. Thank you for joining us. We have a lot to talk about tonight on Park Center. Welcome to Park Center for Sunday, April 7th. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. Thank you guys, as always, for being being with us. We appreciate it. Business out of the way first. Please make sure to subscribe to WDWNT TV uh, for more great content and also give us a thumbs up as it helps people to find us tonight. We have uh, put together quite a panel of people, starting with Shannon. Debbie's still sick, so the union sent me again. Uh, perfect. And Allie. <laughs> Hello, happy Star Wars. And back, Mr. Pete Carney. I am so excited to be here. <laughs> Let's make it happen, Park Center. One of my favorite shows on the internet machine. It's so fun. Pete, I mean, just your presence throws me into a tizzy. I'm fangirling all over the place, so forgive me uh, if oh, I say anything stop. stupid. Gosh, man, the OG, the original, the Park Center guy. Wow, 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 wow. Um, thank you guys so much for being with us. We appreciate you. We've had uh, a lot of news come down uh, in the last couple of weeks. And so I want to start with a universal thing. And, and, and because I feel like it kind of rolls into, yeah, Pete was at Universal tonight uh, getting bees. I don't even want to know how you got those bees. I don't even want to know. Um, the old so, fashioned way. Please and thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, we want to talk about this because this was a big deal. Uh, Universal made this huge announcement uh, coming up. They were going to have on March 28th everybody's attention, and they unleashed the dragons. Uh, dragons Isle of uh, How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke was announced as the first portal that they went into, and I was shocked at how good this looks. I was not. Like, I was looking forward to this at Epic Universe, but I was not prepared for what they were doing here. We all kind of give them a hard time over at Universal for being screen-based. None of this stuff is screen-based. They've got a screen-based show a little bit, it looks like. But, I mean, you were, they're, they've got some very inventive rides. The one with the boat where you're shooting at stuff from the water looks really good. Pete, did you look at any of this stuff? Are you? I, I bet you drive down there and just, like, peek through the fence every day waiting for this to happen. <laughs> Well, funny you should say that. There is a great beer distributor right across the street from the New Epic <laughs> Universe. Uh, okay. Right. And I have been on top of their progress. Uh, no, I'm excited about this. Also, I think this is great uh, marketing. Like, a lot of people are like, why uh, like, why Isle of Burke first? And I think of all the lands, like, that's the land a lot of people are like, that's the throwaway. Or, like, they're really excited about Monsters or Mario. Um, even, like, the third Harry Potter land, what that's going to be like. Like, why, what a great move by them to take the land like most people weren't the most excited about. And I'm sure there's people who love How to Train Your Dragon out there. I mean, or else they would be putting it as a major land in their brand new multi-billion dollar theme park. But I just thought it was a great move. Take this, take the, the land that people thought was a throwaway and show how amazing that is. Really setting the bar really high. Like, hey, this is truly going to be epic. I am pumped about this because there was another land that Universal did. And I think it's their best land that they've ever done. And I had been to that land a million times. I had never seen any of the movies. And it was thanks to the land that I watched the movies. And that little franchise was Harry Potter. So now <laughs> I have some homework before 2025. I got to watch How to Train Your Dragon. And it's all because of this hype video. So bravo, Universal. Bravo. Harry, what? Never heard of it. So um, <laughs> before we move on, uh, yeah, no, but uh, but that's one of those things, too. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not a huge How to Train Your Dragon fan. I saw the first one. The second one uh, left me like a little a little salty because of the way it ended, but I won't spoil anything for anybody. Um, and I never saw the third one. So I, But, I mean, it really seemed like kind of a baller move to go ahead and go, you know, kind of like people talked about with Marvel when DC couldn't make a hit with any movie that didn't have Batman in it, and Marvel goes, hold my beer, here's Guardians of the Galaxy. And so it's kind of the same thing yeah. here. They were like, okay, you guys have Avatar and you guys have Star Wars, but guess what? We have How to Train Your Dragon, and you look at this land, and it looks like it's going to be amazing and the the kind of undercutting thing to me is it looks like it's going to have a lot of uh like energy in the land with like meeting dragons and things that we thought we were going to do at galaxy's edge 
We thought we were going to have that. We have a little bit of that rolling yeah. in in California we'll talk about later. But, yeah, there's a lot of that stuff that I'm really excited about. Uh, but before we, before we move on to the next topic, I do want to say – there it is, Shannon. You get a dance when Shannon's here. Um, Jungle Cruiser has given us a super chat. I have a big announcement as well. I bought a Jabba the Hutt and Millennium Falcon uh, popcorn buckets. Uh, <laughs> then at the Mark and Alice Davis auction, a park bench from Wilderness Lodge. Wow. Uh, I know it's not a cabin. Uh, thank you, Jungle Cruiser, as always, for your support. We appreciate the, the super chat. Uh, and, again, if you guys want a super chat, every time we hit that button – out, just you know, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon goes. <laughs> Shannon goes nuts. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for for doing that. But here's the here's why I put this on here. So, Disney announced the same day that they roll out Epic Universe, and this either shows an insane amount of confidence or this shows a complete tone deaf situation. But they announced that they've got. 90 new buses coming to the fleet, including wraps with Orange Bird, Zootopia, and more. Pete's excited that there are new buses coming. But, I mean, I saw this all over Twitter. People are like, okay, a huge land that, uh, like, lives, like, beyond our expectations or buses. Um, <laughs> Allie, talk about the buses. I know you're pretty excited about them. I am excited because I usually rough it over at All Stars, and we are all about the buses. And... There's a lot of buses that are broken down or running behind, so I am totally here for new buses. If it makes it more accessible and quicker to get people that need the accessibility on and off the buses, I am so here for that. Plus, it's fun to have the new wraps and see what bus you get. And Orange Bird is great, so looking forward to new buses next week. Here's the funny thing that I think about every time I think about people getting excited about a Skyliner wrap or any of those things is something that my dad told me when I was a little kid. You know, the sky buckets that used to go over the Magic Kingdom. I was always wanting a blue one. And when you get in, you can't tell you're in a blue one. I mean, so right. like it's one of those things like from the outside, you want to be behind the Orange Bird bus, not in the Orange Bird bus so that you can enjoy it. Um, Shannon, bus thoughts? Well, I am with Allie. I am team buses. I think buses get a lot of hate in Disney. I personally don't rent a car or anything like that. However, how have we learned our lessons about wraps? Like, does anyone actually enjoy the wraps? I can't see out of the Skyliner. I can't see out of the bus. I enjoy looking out of the bus. But now you can't see anything. Or they're trying to hide the fact that they just don't hide things they're supposed to be hiding anymore. I don't know. Uh, Pete, You, you uh, have you ridden every bus that there is at Disney? Um, I mean, uh, there's 90 new ones. I got to get after it. Um, <laughs> I will say it has come, and this is kind of sad because there's so many different wraps at Walt Disney World. I was over at Fantasia Gardens playing some mini golf. Uh, this was Monday. So basically, almost a week ago. And I swear the Remy bus pulled up alongside us as we were playing. And I was hanging out with Ryan. And I said, Ryan, I think that's a new wrap. And he goes, they're supposed to have some new wraps coming out soon. I go, that's got to be one of them. And he's like, if you can just pick out the wrap, we were able to do it. And it looks fantastic. But I'm with everyone else. When you're on the bus, it just impedes your view. So it's really cool on the road. Uh, not as much fun on the bus. But, hey, it's fun. It looks exciting. I, every once in a while, think it's more exciting to see a non-wrapped bus. You get some of that nostalgia, <laughs> that old feel. Give me those buses that still smell like, you know, elementary school. Like they tried to slowly kill us. You know, like build up our tolerance. Also, yeah. this was big news because they are the third largest bus fleet in the state of Florida. So 90 new buses, this could have maybe put them into number two. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, you know, and I'm not trying to put down the buses, uh, the bus wraps. I just think it's funny that you get all excited about, oh, I'm going to step onto the Figment bus. And as soon as you step onto it, you can't see it anymore. It's gone. Uh, but as it like the kinetic feel of them driving around, it does make you feel like I'm in a special place when you when you see them yeah. driving around Disney. So that is kind of cool. I like that. It would be cool uh, if the buses played like the ride music. Like you got a Figment bus and it played the Figment music. That would be fun, kind of fun. You know, I'm just saying. That sounds like a lot of trouble, man. I don't know what uh, I don't know where you think <laughs> well, they're going to get the kind of time to do it that. For the show, I was going to say if you smelled all the scents, but that sounds like even more work. So I changed it to music because everyone's got Spotify. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> sure, sure. That's what. Uh, yeah, <laughs> give the bus drivers something else to do. Um, all right, so let's move on to this. They had a shareholder call. 
Uh, and, and I'm trying to do this like chronologically in the way that this came out. So uh, the 28th, we learned that Epic Universe and, and How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, and then the buses were announced the same day. And then they had the shareholder call on April 3rd. And on that call, Bob Iger was asked the question, uh, do you think – and these are <laughs> – these are these softball questions, right? Somebody asked a question. He had it prepared. He knew what was coming. Um, and so somebody asked the question, like, how does Disney plan to compete with Epic Universe? And he said, we've been doing that all along. We've known for 10 years this was coming. And so we've been putting out things like the changes that we have at Epcot or the Tron uh, roller coaster. Or, and he listed off some things. But... Um, let me go to you on this, Shannon, because I want to ask you, oh, no. do you feel like that was a good response? Because there, he didn't mention the fact that during that time, there's also been Hagrid's uh, roller coaster and the Velocicoaster and other things happening over at – I love this. Thank you. This is what I miss. Uh, <laughs> over, over, at, uh, over at Universal. So do you think that was – like, do you think that's a solid answer? I don't think anyone on God's green earth thinks that was a good answer. Like, no, you're not fooling <laughs> anybody. So no, <laughs> no, but do I think, okay. listen, am I positive about the outlook of things? I think they know what's coming now. And I think they're going to be better prepared, especially with Chase back out. So. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so one of the things that he did mention is, and, and I almost was praying that he wouldn't talk about this again because he's gotten into trouble on it twice, was the Avatar whatever it is that's coming out to California. So the first time he talked about it, he was like, it's just an attraction or it's an experience. And then yeah. it was, we're going to put it in DCA. No, we're not. We're, that was, somebody <laughs> made that up. And then it was, oh, it's going to be uh, a land. No, did I say land? I meant experience. So it's like, so what he, he came back to it though. He came back to it on the call and he said that this is a concept art for an av like what the avatar experience could be. He was so super vague about this alley. Like it was like he, he needed to come back and restate it a third time, but I feel like he didn't really tell us anything new. Do you? No, they didn't tell us anything. I just, like I, our writers were watching that shareholder call. They said it was the most anticlimactic thing ever. And then, I mean, if that's what we actually get, it looks beautiful, but where are they going to put that? And nobody knows what is actually happening. I mean, at, on paper, it looks great, but like they obviously are confused. They don't know what is actually going to happen. And if it's just an experience, that's going to be really, really lame and not a great answer to Epic Universe. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Well, I mean, I he doesn't have it, but I'm being told that it's going to be the top floor of all the parking garages that they're building. Just jumping. <laughs> it's going to be floating mountains. It's going to look just like you're pulling an animal kingdom, but it's just like the top. It's an experience. You can park and hear a banshee park <laughs> under a mountain. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, um, I, I don't deserve the whole screen for really my, my <laughs> comments. Just come out I'm going to give you whatever um, you want, man. So here's the thing no, about I just it. Though, my it's... Corner. Keep me in the corner. It's where I, it's where I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, just turn and face the corner and put your little hat on, and we're going to be good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, honestly, with this uh, with this experience, I'm uh, you know I'm optimistic. But one of the other things that people kind of came at it about is to say that it looks like it's based on the sequel. And a lot of people were on Twitter going, well, wait a minute, that doesn't ever work for you. Like, remember Galaxy's Edge? You should go back to the original, <laughs> and that's what you should be doing. Yeah. I changed doing... my answer. It's going to be in all the pool areas if it's the sequel, uh... not on the rooftops. <laughs> it's now in the pool areas. Well, also, can I just I, say, Bob Iger's response. say whatever response, you want. Just to Bob Iger's response, right? Oh. <laughs> I, I get it was a great time for him to kind of brag a little bit of all of his accomplishments. But that's like if I went on a job interview and they were like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Or like, what can you do for us? And I was like, well, uh, I was on the honor roll in the seventh and eighth grade. I graduated high school and went to all my class. Like, he listed all the things in the past. It's like, all I think Disney fans want to hear is, what are you going to give us in the future that's not a maybe this or a maybe this land, is give us some more concrete stuff. I know we've gotten a lot of stuff, um, but a lot of those stuff weren't super exciting as Disney fans. Listen, if you're getting a brand new epic universe theme park, that's monster, monster stuff. We got like, you know, one of the things he listed was like Tron. We got a copycat of a ride from China that only fits 60% yeah. of the people that want to go on it. Like, that's not like as epic as like the Isle of Burke video looks insane. And if they did a video for that for yeah. just Tron, it would not have the same appeal. So I think 
while yes, congratulations to him for pulling so much off. We're almost, we're so spoiled. We didn't notice we got a new thing every year for 10 years. It's like, that's all great. But we want to know where you're going. Where What are you doing in response to this yeah. as Disney fans? Because we're just excited about the future as you are. Yep, absolutely. Um, and honestly, I mean, we have a Tron bus, so we're good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, the slowest moving bus. The irony is wild. <laughs> so good. Uh, all right, so heads up. We have another super chat from our good friend Jungle Cruiser. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Shannon. Uh, is, he says, Pete, can you provide updates on all the new buses that you ride? Uh, we need to get a bus rider <laughs> button. Uh, Disney never says anything. They are clueless. So, yeah. See, he's taking notes. There you go. The super chat pays off. So thank you so much for your super chat. We appreciate you. Uh, let's move on, though, because – okay, fine. I'm grateful. Uh, no, it's all good. Um, so, so let's move on to the expansion because – I find it an interesting, again, looking at the timeline, the call was on the 3rd. He says, we've done a whole bunch of stuff. Y'all calm down. Don't worry about Epic Universe. It's fine. The next day, there's there's announcements. And it's like, well, shouldn't those announcements have been on the shareholder call? Did he come back and say to everybody, look, guys, we need to talk about stuff really quick? I don't know. I'm just I mean, maybe I'm just conspiracy theory in here. But uh, so we got to see the models of Encanto and Indiana Jones in this sort of like Disney's pretending like they're going behind the scenes and showing us this in this uh, uh, in this Instagram reel where we get to see the Imagineers like, oh, you're here. Let me show you some stuff we've got. But again, this seems like something you would have, I don't know, shared on the shareholder call. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you had this in your pocket, I assume the reason they weren't talking about all this stuff is that they were holding something for the sold out D23 Expo that's coming. Instead, they were like, you know, man, we need to push some more content out there because people clearly are uh, are freaking out a little bit. And then the same. Do you think they were waiting for the reactions? Because maybe they were like, hey, maybe this call goes really well. We can hold this stuff. And next time uh, Universal drops the land, we can counteract. But they're like, if it goes real bad, risky. let's pump this out the next yeah. day. Everyone forget about the call. Here, Look at your attention. <laughs> put your attention here. Disney's usually really good at I'm that. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I mean, again, like saying. that's what, that's why I'm, that's why I've got my tinfoil hat on, and that's why I'm saying that I think that that's a possibility of I what think, might have no, happened. I'm not even joking. I really think Disney Universal do some form of that where they have a few things waiting for those rainy days to use. Like there's little nuggets of information that they can drop. Like I'm sure Disney, if they wanted to, has like and we get little trinkets of information and whatnot but they can drop we get excited about uh parking permits at disney world like anything so they can drop information all the time i really do think that and i'm not saying this is what happened with the call but i do think there's definitely contingencies for both parks uh to have new stories ready when needed hey we need a positive thing right now we need you know we could use a little bit of love whether it's the stock uh, you know universal drops something sea world drops a penguin coaster you never know I'm just if they need, I don't know if they actually do it, but it feels like they do to me. Man, I knew I was going to need something heavier for this Pete conversation. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, yeah, I, I think you're right, but like I heard along the way, and this could be something completely made up. That when the lane situation happened, the little boy at Disney World, the alligator, that that whole thing that went down. It was almost the next day when they announced the Fox merger that they were buying Fox. That, I mean, that's I, I, it's almost irrefutable to think like how close those things were. And I, from everything I've heard, they weren't ready to make that announcement yet. That was just the biggest thing that they had ready. So, anyway, again, PR take spin. there. There you go. I mean, there is a whole department for it. They must be doing something, right? So. Uh, so that was one of the things that dropped was about that expansion. But we also saw that it looks like they're getting ready for uh, for the what is beyond Big Thunder Mountain at the Magic Kingdom. They put in uh, permits to start building out uh, and making what they're calling the largest expansion in the park's history. So, Shannon, do you think that's the response that you needed to hear from Bob? Mm -hmm. It's still not a response, is it? What is this? What is it going to be, right? I mean, what is it going to be where we've been given 20 ideas? And I think it would be way more impactful to tell us, 
hey, this is, you know, maybe not down to the attraction or the restaurant or whatever, but at least like this is a theme that we have selected. This is what we're going with and this is what you can expect. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. along the same lines, along the same lines, the next day we heard about this Imagineering YouTube uh, show. They, they, they mentioned it that afternoon that there's this Imagineering YouTube show that's coming. And first question I have as somebody who watches a lot of Disney Plus is you have an entire streaming service you're trying to push <laughs> and you decide to drop that on YouTube and give that money to Google, I guess. I, I don't know, it's crazy, but they dropped it, then we call it Imagineering. Now, don't get me wrong, I just, uh, I no crumbs when it comes to this stuff. I love all of it. Anything that comes yeah. out about Imagineering, behind the scenes, Disney stuff, boom, 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 I'm all about it. It just seems weird that they would drop it here, yeah. um, but they made the announcement You want people on... to actually watch it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, anyway, so sorry, so sorry. Uh, no, it's a, we're going to be fine. We're, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Um, <clears throat> but uh, during this one, it was about animatronics, which, by the way, I'm sure everybody watches. It's like 13 minutes long. Josh, oh, Josh Damara was hosting at the very beginning. He comes through. He talks about the legacy of the company. Zazu from the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management is in the video. Like, that's crazy. Um, you know, and a lot of other cool stuff was in there. But the, the, the what seems like the whole purpose of it was something that wasn't, again, talked about, like, seemingly at all on the uh, on the shareholder call, which was Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And we got to see these amazing animatronics of uh, Lewis and Ralphie and Tiana, uh, all of these uh, really, like, more in depth than we've ever it's a bigger preview i feel like we've than we've ever been done, given for an attraction but on top of that of animatronics in general so um ali when you saw this did you say okay i'm in we're we're, we're back in business or are you still trying to figure out when this is all coming to disney World? <laughs> i think it looks great i mean the animatronics look really well done they announced those little critters they're gonna have so it seems like it's still having a little bit of a nod to you know the characters of splash mountain i think it looks great i hope the ride is wonderful but please just give us some dates like we're still waiting for hard dates on all of this and i just don't get the secrecy of it just tell us no yeah. don't people. tell them because then all the outer state people are going to come <laughs> and how am i supposed to get on the ride opening day without waiting if you tell the people they're going to show up <laughs> don't tell anyone that's my policy just quietly open it just well, shoot me a text don't use the my disney experience app please just use an sms <laughs> put it on youtube just let us know when it's opening no i well, honestly think this, this ride i said it out of the gate is i i don't think anyone really has an issue with this ride they have an issue with that it's replacing splash mountain the same thing with kind yeah. of like mickey Minnie's runaway railway right it's awesome over in california and we were pretty awesome here too but the fact that they took away our great movie ride is what caused all the drama. It's, it's taking over a beloved ride. Splash Mountain was my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. It was your best bang for your buck, I think, at Disney. Like, it's thrills, it's dark ride, it's fun, it's family friendly. It was over 10 minutes long. It, was, it's a, it hits all the boxes. It just it was time to move on, right? The parks have to keep growing and evolving. And I again, I love the ride and I get everyone's, I don't, I don't know if I get all the hate, I get everyone's frustration that they lost Splash Mountain. But I said from the start, like, I think they know that they have really big shoes they have to fill with this project because you are taking away what so many people adore and it's their favorite ride in the park. And that's almost never been done is losing the best ride in a park for something new. They, they would fix or replace something that, like, isn't getting the same amount of put through or that's run down and dilapidated. So this is New Waters, and I'm really excited they're, they're, they're going hard. I mean, everything we've seen has been really good. Really good. Oh. Are you saying it's time to be moving along? We got, we got to keep moving along. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, and, and Shannon, I want to let you uh, weigh in on this one too. But um, this this piece of uh, of of plush, we'll call it, uh, is going to be available at Target, and apparently it is a Tiana's Bayou Adventure piece of merch available at Target. Uh, so and then. And then here's like here's a a, a T-shirt for uh, that like has an icon shirt but it has tiana's water tower on it there's let let me pull this up there's a land that they're building that won't be ready until 2025 and here's the merch they rolled out for isle of burke like there's all this merch for isle of burke 
And Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is opening soon, they're not doing the same thing. And this is very unlike Disney not to jump on the merch train. This is insane to me. Is like all this stuff for for Epic Universe again, more than a year away. And this other thing is supposed to open any time now, which also they didn't mention on the shareholders call when it was going to when yeah. it was going to open, uh, which would have been nice. But um, uh, I don't know. That's just a side note. But Shannon, anything on this topic before we move on? No. Well, you have the Briar Patch. Is that going to come back? That's a big question in my mind. I mean, that was a beautifully themed little gift shop. And to your point, Rob, open that up now. Start selling that merch getting people over in that area. But that's, I mean, Mama Odie looks absolutely amazing and I can't wait to see her. I think they are giving the people what they've wanted for a very long time. So it's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's let's talk about something else that came up at Destination D23, which is Test Track 3.0. I feel like most people, Ooh. and I could, I could be wrong on this, <laughs> most people love the first one, don't like the second one. Is, any, is there anybody on here that's a huge fan of the second Test Track 2.0? I'm going to be yeah. honest. Keep I don't thinking remember about writing it. the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, so to me, I don't remember writing the first one. So this is the only one I know. So, I mean, it's fun. But if you're telling me version 3 is going to give us the best of both worlds, then sign me up. I'm pumped about this. Yeah. Everyone yeah. talks about World of Motion and Test Track 1, and I don't remember any of it. So it's about time I get a little court, a little piece of the action. I'm I will tell you. It's almost better than the ride, right? Oh, yeah. For test track, test track yeah. one point oh. Yeah. Uh, as the as the senior person here, I will tell you, uh, <laughs> I I liked World of Motion. I liked it when Epcot was every attraction is a Pirates of the Caribbean in itself. Huge amounts of animatronics. That's what World of Motion was. That's what Horizons was. That's what Universe of Energy was. Spaceship Earth. Just like piled in with animatronics because that's one of the things i love about disney which is why i get so excited about that imagineering video and all the things that are coming tiana it's not just like like all that stuff there so it says they're going to be opening it up with throws to the original world of motion i don't know how you do that uh, unless you're gonna like dig up some of those uh animatronics and put them back out there i assume most of those are in jason or tom's basement at this point but um <laughs> But again, I mean, this this looks pretty cool. The the thing about it is that that I find interesting is that this one is going to close 2.0 on January 17th or June 17th. Sorry, June 17th. So, Ali, I know you're headed down there for the race in April. Are you going to put it on your must do list to ride this one more time before they close it down? I, yeah, I was looking at it when you sent the list, and I, I don't ever go on test track because I absolutely hate it. It's so bad compared to when I can go on cars whoa, out here. Whoa, but whoa, yeah, whoa. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like it. It's terrible. But yeah, I am going to go on it in next week so I can get one last ride and remember why I don't like it. <laughs> wow, so remember you why? Hate it because of the, like, why is the hate so much hate? Is it like because you're used to California gas prices? Or what is it? Oh, oh wow. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, so here's the thing, How though. How do you not is like it... fun? Where, where else it's can you get fun. to a car that ride is not fun. Hour? Nowhere. If that ride was not fun, it would have the kind of lines that Mission Space does, but it doesn't. It always has a huge line, and and you have to wait, and it's got the single rider and all that. I do think the attraction is fun. I get what you're saying, though, Allie. Like, if you've ridden cars, oh, you've terrible. ridden a better version of Test Track. But at the same time, it's actually still the same attraction. It's just the theming inside is different. Everything, the track is the same. The cars do the same thing. Everything is the same as it was with Test Track. 1.0 but Shannon, i can see do you how have... doing the inside like honestly inside of test track feels like an old school universal ride it's just like boards that light up as a matter of fact there's like local carnivals that used to come through town that had just as like exciting light up things <laughs> that ride is just fun because it goes 65 miles an hour and you and then as a kid or a young person you get to design a car do the brakes almost get hit by a truck it's everything you want to do as a kid and it's fun <laughs> as an adult watching the expression of those but yeah they could re totally redo the inside and make that ride so much better. So yeah, definitely plus the yeah, That's my issue, yeah. Disney. My oh. issue is the inside, yeah. Uh, Shannon, is it fun to get hit by a truck? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, can't say I've, I've ever experienced that, but you know, like, can we have, at minimum get the door to work again? Like <laughs> even that will plus the attraction. So Listen, the door? can only go up from here. Yeah, the door is just the door? permanently what open. Door? Oh, as you, the, the one that, to, to go outside? Yeah. 
Oh, gotcha. Uh, it's no, it's stuck open? I haven't been on in like a month. Really? I got to go check it out. I, I also well, say if they're going to make some adjustments like opening doors, maybe have the top come down <laughs> so we can ride it in the rain. I'm just saying. Are you guys all the – I mean, I feel like even though I've already ridden this recently – I need to write it again now that I know it's going away. Is that just my inner crazy, or does everybody no, feel that way? Okay. Yeah, yeah we all do. Cause, all right, Pete, P- you Disney were fans. that way. Yeah, exactly. We're Disney fans. No, we're not doing that. Oh, let me do it the uh, right way. We're Disney fans. Of course we're going to want to ride before it closes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make a TikTok next week of all three of us yeah. going on this? Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, we should. We should. We totally should. I here's the thing though is that I I have always felt that way, and every time that something was closing, my wife's like, "You don't need to go. You just wrote it." And I'm like, "Yes, I do. It's the last time I'll ever have a universe of energy in my life." Um, so yeah, it's one of those things. Um, so I let's know. move on uh to Communicore Hall, and in Communicore Hall, this is this is the end. We hope this is they're finally going to be finishing Epcot. Uh, this is, uh, this is something Epcot has been in a state of becoming for a long, (laughs) long time. Uh, walkway near imagination pavilion is reopening. That's part of the construction there. And then they did, uh, they've got the Communicore hall sign up, which is very similar to the ones on the other side that say creations and connections. And then they, uh, uh, they also have a, a second sign up and they have tested the lighting panels. Uh, I think the lighting looks kind of sad and maybe it's just <laughs> the testing phase of it i don't know shannon talk to me about this you said you didn't oh. want to talk about connections hall but i'm gonna make yeah. you talk about connections hall wait i don't know. i don't know what to say about this to me the only positive here is that we're gonna have some more ac in that area yeah. i don't i don't know what to expect from it what's gonna be in there i know there's gonna be a stage and um, potentially a festival center, which I'm just will be disappointed that we didn't get the second story festival center. So, yeah, no, yeah, I agree yeah. with you on that one. Uh, Pete, I think the biggest win here is that all walls are down now. Isn't that basically it? Big deal. We're so happy the walls are down. I was tired of them. I was tired of explaining to people what's on the other side of the wall. I was just, uh, yeah, um, I'm just not a fan of the walls. Also, just the, let's just talk about how this commuter kernel hold. Kind of feels like Thursday night growing up. It's leftovers night, so it's whatever's left in the fridge. Like, they had some <laughs> random colors put on there. It's not even completed, like, you know, space of earth pattern. Uh, it feels like they took letters from other buildings that didn't fit, and we're like, oh, it makes Communicore whole. Like, it just feels very last minute. Even the Encanto show, the concept art, which can be as crazy and as magical as you want, looks like a school cafeteria. It looks like the arts classes <laughs> made the decorations. <laughs> There's a little stage with four legs of the local cup, like the dad's built. It, it, like, it, and it looks like all the sixth graders are going to sing in Kanto songs. That's what the concept art looks like. Yep. Uh, every, Care Bear and Chat and, and David are going, no more Walcott. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's become, it's a thing. Pete, do you remember way back when with Park Center? You do. You do. Remember. We that, both had that, no gray I, hairs. We were young, but, Rob. We were I know, young. I know. And we, exactly. we had thirst for life. We did. We did. We weren't beaten down by, you know, by the pandemic. Yeah. But before that all happened, I I said to you, because you, I know you have a uh, vast knowledge of construction process. I said, do we have to tear up all of Epcot at once? Because it's been well, yeah. forever. Right. Well, when I, and I talked about it on this show, what, five years ago when they started putting yep. the walls up. Yep. And I said, I think for this, because the, the scope and scale is just easier to have one big project and get it done. The big curveball was a global <coughs> pandemic in the middle, which probably had to do with shipping issues and, and then parks closing and everything else. We could talk about that forever. But I don't think anybody wanted this to take this long. I think that they had good intentions if there was no pandemic. And also, uh, they had a, a regime change, too. Chapek came in. Iger came out. Iger came back in. Um, projects got budget cut. We had a three-story festival pavilion that just, like, disappeared um we had we had a beautiful fountain that they didn't have to demolish disappear for a planter that looks like you know no. my mom had a great day <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right we're out of time for that one let's move on uh so they that this was kind of out of left field and i kind of oh. love this there are some th- hold on a second there are some times where things will happen and and they'll throw something we didn't know was coming and they did that with this little show that they have 
in Epcot. Now, there was this little area of the, the Epcot quad, if you want to compare it to a community college, it where it's there's nothing there. <laughs> there's not even seats. And I was like, what is this for? And they had a Daisy Duck meet and greet out there one day. And I was like, oh, that's there, there should be something more there. And they put out this show. And it, I, I'm going to be honest. As soon as I saw Anti-Gravity, I thought this was a review of an ice cream cone. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But uh, but they have this like this this like ball of death out uh, on the patio there, and they bring these uh, these ladies out, and they uh, they go through and they do some acrobatics, and quite honestly, I think it's it's pretty nice that they threw this out there. Shannon, thoughts? I can't think of a better way to spend my time in the than standing in the burning heat. Watching some weird acrobat show in the middle of Epcot. Sorry, I'm going to hate on this one. It looks very weird. I don't want any part of it. And no shade to the very talented performers. They were asked to do this. Uh, oh, so funny. Wow. I mean, I mean, come on. They're like, strike a pose. There's nothing to it. Pete, talk to me. Have you seen this in person? Uh, I have. I, I, I have. And also, I, I was glad I went because you see, I thought that it didn't get more love or a bigger announcement. Like, we're, like finally, Disney, what, what do you think most Disney fans have complained about more than anything else is entertainment in the parks. We miss the people walking around, those, those one-on-one interactions. Um, and, and also just, like, we like shows. We like things to do. We like these things. Like, how come this didn't get an announcement? So I'm like, maybe it's temporary. Maybe it's a filler. But they put in permanent lighting on the two rusty umbrellas right next to it that <laughs> shoot lighting down for the show at night. So I'm like, this must be sticking around for a little bit i i would agree right but and some of what shannon said is very funny but accurate is that it is out in the sun it's in a part of the park that's kind of separated away from all the other attractions in the world showcase so you have to go up there but more everything right you, you gotta i'm not gonna ever yeah. say no to entertainment i'm not gonna ever say no to a show i'm not and also like epcot has gotten this reputation over the years as like hey just come here and pay to eat and drink around the world showcase and where's the actual theme park and I think this gives more families options, things to do. People who aren't big World Showcase people have more things to do uh, in the front half of the park. So, again, more everything. And I, I kind of like things that aren't for everybody, too, because we need to mix up the crowds. If we all keep doing the same big e-ticket rides, it's going to be miserable all the time. Wait, yeah. question. How long will it take <laughs> for a child to go up there and spin around on that thing? Because it oh, looks like a glorified... Oh, you mean a child? Glorified... You mean this guy? Uh, the first time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have safety precautions in place. For they know what they have. No, it's pretty hardcore security. There's a three-prong uh, switchback thing that you like, literally from the mall. That's what's guarding that entire contraption. So you're oh, saying no, that there works. are some things in place? Gotcha. So I'm saying uh, I went, oops, and one of them popped open. I could just go swing around on the ball of nature. Okay. <laughs> ball of nature. Oh. Ball of nature. <laughs> the ball of nature. Exactly. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on uh, to something else here. So let's move into Star Wars because uh, there was amazing amounts of Star Wars that came out this week uh, or last week. One of the things is that they have the season of the Force has debuted at Disneyland, and Allie was tirelessly uh, out there making sure to cover every single solitary bit of it. There's one thing in particular that I think we need to talk about, the Jabba in the room. Uh, the This popcorn bucket uh, looks uh, amazing, and here you've got one as a show and tell there. So good, yeah. so cool. Um, so is good. that mine? Is that one mine? Uh, can be, yeah, this one looks good. I no, did send I'm... two of them back when they handed it to me. I was like, nope, there's marks on there. I can't have that. And they just glare at me. But <laughs> God bless you. You are the best. Um, but uh, but so here's the thing that strikes me as weird about Season of the Force is it was something that they, they rolled out before Star Wars Land Galaxy's Edge was open. They had Season of the Force at Disneyland back during the 60th anniversary year, I think. Um, I they think had so. – they had Season of the Force, and they had all these banners up, and they had uh, Hyperspace Mountain, the overlay for Space Mountain, and, and food and all this other stuff because they didn't have a Star Wars land yet. And I guess I thought that after that, it would just go away forever. Is this the first one back in a while? Yeah, last year, I think we just had, like, Star Wars month. or I don't remember what it was exactly called, but it definitely was not Season of the Force. This was... 
There was a lot, and they did a really good job. It felt really Star Wars-y, bunch of food, bunch of options, new entertainment, popcorn bucket. There's two new lines of clothes that came out, and then there is even more stuff coming out on May the 4th. So this is going to go on, at least for us, for a while. And I don't fully understand why Florida basically got nothing. <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, that's we usually how it works. It. Yeah. What, what was that, Pete? I just said we can't handle it. It's too much. It's too much. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is too much. Um, but it wasn't. It wasn't just the the Java popcorn bucket, which would have been fine. It would have been okay. But yeah. there's also there's also all of this food uh, that came out and debuted for season of the Force. Uh, some new merchandise and this season of the Force scavenger hunt. This is what well, I really want to talk thing. to you. <laughs> what I really want to talk oh, to you about, Allie, because watching in oh Slack as you tried to report about this, I feel like you were about <laughs> ready to murder a small child because of this. I was game. ready to burn it down. I found, yeah, yeah, so you pick it up at over by Mountain, that store over there, Star Traders, and then they hand you the board. And then later in the day, they were giving better explanation, but they just kind of sent me on my way. So you go back to Galaxy's Edge, you follow the map. I think I have one. Yeah, I do have one. So it's got all these like instructions on it and all the places you have to go in Galaxy's Edge. So I walked around, took photos of all the little canisters, and it's all in that secret Star Wars language. So I'm sending the photos in to our editors who can understand all of that. And I have like nobody, none of us with these boards knew what was happening. People were writing down weird letters. I was writing down what they told me to do, and I had no idea how to solve it. So then you go back to all the way back to Tomorrowland and you have to find another six random signs that are supposed to help you decode all of this. But the signs have three different things listed on them. I couldn't find one of the signs. It was a mess. So finally, I just walked in there like my board was ruined and I was like, please just give me the prize. <laughs> yeah. And the prize was like a little card with Chewy on it. I was like, oh, that was really anticlimactic. It is way too complicated. Yeah. In Florida, they let us play to our strengths and they go, where's the bee? <laughs> Where's the bee? There's the bee. Oh, yay. yay. Yeah. Good job. Very Florida. simple. And that little language, Arabesh. Come on, get with it. Um, Arabesh. So, yeah, you're right. so here's the other thing that happened is a bunch of meet and greets, including these buddies, the BDX roaming droids. Yeah, are, those are, are so here. cute. Oh, oh, they're so uh, cute. I love them. They are, yeah, they're in Galaxy's oh, Edge they're... during the day. That's kind of awesome. And then also, they're you. Uh, you you went yep. chasing down Sabine Wren as well, right? Yep. Also met her. She was wonderful. She talked about her purple hair with me. I had a purple figment jacket on. We bonded. She was great. Nice. Uh, yes. Yeah, you guys look like you had a good time. But also, you look like you had a really good time when you had to drink these. Oh, oh, that was fantastic. Yes, I have now had Star Cruiser drinks. I own Star Clu Cruiser glassware. Those drinks were amazing. Um... I was actually surprised because they give you the drinks in those actual glasses and the portion size was huge. Usually when you go to Oga's, you're paying what, $19 and it's a tiny little mixed drink that maybe has like- I was gonna say, and they're not watered down, like, would I it? like them? You would like, like, like them. Like, like I them, Ogas, would we like them? We would like them. You would you would approve. Like I left Oga's feeling pretty good. Not gonna lie All at right. 9 a.m. So, yeah. yeah, so there they are. They're They're really cool. That is cool glassware. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and I'm dying that, that I'm dying that the box full on says Star Cruiser on it. Like wow. just <laughs> And you didn't even have to spend six grand for it. Amazing. Right. And I went and I spent that? sixty bucks. I got the glasses. The drinks were amazing. The both drinks Bargain. were really well done. Ton of alcohol in them. Great. No complaints. I was gonna Not say to if say. if if you had that much alcohol, no wonder you couldn't figure out the game. Um, this all... I was about to make the same joke. I'm like, Rob, Rob's going to do it. Rob's going to do it. I mean, Pete, come on. Come on. We go way back. Like, um, like yeah. Scavenger makes no sense. Ali, turn it upside down. Oh, that's, oh, how, that's how it works. I got it. You're like, I can't, Yay, I can't Allie. read this. Ali did it. There's the B. There's the B. Yay. She's like, I can't read this stupid Star Wars language. Ali, that's English. Um, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and then hey, also goes on my list. I went <laughs> also something we've been looking forward to for a long time is they finally are adding 
these scenes to Star Tours, that we have all of this IP from the Disney Plus shows. We have Andor and Ahsoka, and we have um, uh, Mandalorian and Grogu. Did you ride Star Tours with any of these? No, that ride makes me motion sick. So thankfully, our Florida team, I think, probably did about 20 rides on it to finally get all of the scenes. Um, I did do Hyperspace Mountain. That one I can do, but Star Tours makes me motion sick. Uh, I totally understand. Uh, and then they brought out some new merch for Star Tours, including this jacket, which I feel like I need to have this jacket. This looks amazing. The jacket is uh, nice, yeah. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the costume from uh, from the from the attraction. So uh, thank you for going and doing uh, drinking all those drinks and for uh, playing the game and for meeting Sabine and, uh, and the BDX droids and all that stuff. We appreciate your efforts in all this, but... Your, your work's not done. It's just beginning because Pixar Fest is on the horizon. So talk wow. to me yeah. a little bit about... You guys get so about... much stuff. Yeah, we that's do get I'm so much stuff. With, with Season of the Force happening the same time as Pixar Fest. And I'm, the nighttime show. We didn't even talk about the fireworks. Yeah, I didn't even talk about the fireworks. Yeah. Talk about the fireworks. <laughs> well, I was there Friday ready to film, and it was, of course, canceled because of the winds that were knocking things over at the park, which we'll get to later. Um, yeah. But they did happen last night. Arlo was able to film it. I watched um, watched the, the video. It looks pretty cool. Like it's a nice offering. They're just testing John Williams' Star Wars music for minutes. It kind of syncs with the show, and they changed the color of the spires a little bit. It's a nice addition. So it was a good offering. Okay. Uh, so then Pixar right, Fest. Pixar Fest. Uh, <laughs> April what? Twenty six. Is that right? Twenty sixth. Yeah. Where we get more popcorn buckets, <laughs> two new buckets. That's really what uh, it's I think all there's about. A Doug one, yeah, Doug one for the magic key holders, and then that really cool Pizza Planet one. Uh, a new parade, because we get parades out here, so DCA will have a Crazy. parade that actually looks pretty cool. A whole bunch of merchandise. I like that it's resort wide. I'm personally not super excited for Pixar, but I'll have a good time. I'm sure we'll all have a good time with this. Well, again, like I don't know how they choose what stuff they're going to put up because you've got decorations up already for Pixar Fest around. Yeah. Uh, is there stuff up for Season of the Force as well? Not in downtown Disney, no. They just put those. There's that one over by Earl's, and then they put that other one up over by Tortilla Joe's. But I That's wish they right. would interact with the Magic Band. Like, why did I buy all of these Magic Bands if they don't do anything? <laughs> Because they're awesome? I don't understand the question. Uh, yeah, uh, and then <laughs> the, the one final thing is we, we had some footage of, uh, of these, uh, the, these cars from, uh, from Cars Land. <laughs> so uh, so they've, they've never done this before yeah. for Pixar Fest? Are these new? I think they had those for the After Dark event. The Pixar After Dark event, they had a meet and greet with those. I gotcha. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Pixar Fest looks great. Season of the Forest looks great. If you guys are headed out to California, try to plan your trip uh, somewhere between like May and June uh, so that you can catch mm -hmm. Pixar Fest and Season of the Forest all at the same time. And then who knows what else you guys are going to get out there. There's, uh, there's a lot of fun happening. Uh, one of the, uh, the next things I want to talk about is Earth Month because Earth Month is coming. It's here, actually. And I keep doing this. So... There's Earth Month. We have we have magic shots of uh, of uh, coming to Animal Kingdom. So that's one thing. And then we also have menus of food for Earth Month. Pete, will you be partaking in all of the Earth Month food that's coming to uh, to Walt Disney World? Please tell me everything. Everything but desserts. Um, no. I just don't. I just don't feel like I can support people who are taking sugar from this great planet uh, and putting it in my food. So no, I just I've never. Been been a big dessert. Well, that's not true. I love desserts, but I had to give them up. It was drinking or desserts, and hey, I love a cold beverage. I love Animal Kingdom. I think everyone knows one of my favorite parks. I love Earth Month. I think it's very important. This all ties back. I mean, Animal Kingdom opened on Earth Day back in 98. Like, I love all the Earth things. I really do wish it was more mini shows. Like, you know what they should have done? Bring that little spinner from Epcot and put it here for the month, and then show it to Epcot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, or bring us one of the old harmonious barges, drop it in the lagoon, and put on a daytime show. I'm just saying, uh, I, I wish I did a little bit more for Earth Month and a couple of cupcakes, um, because it is kind of the big deal for Animal Kingdom. But hey, uh, something is better than nothing, so beggars cannot be choosers. And we're gonna get a well, whole uh, Central America land soon, so whatever. Yeah, so <laughs> that look, drink looks that, good though. Yeah, but this cake looks amazing, like, 
Cake looks amazing, oh, they too. Oh, look great. They are works yeah. of art. Yeah, this and this, are you kidding me? Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Support the earth, buy this cupcake. That's all. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, uh, will you be making a trip just for Earth Month? <laughs> oh, no. Can't say it's at the top of my to-do list. No? <laughs> no, I'm going to pass. Why not? Yeah. Uh, how about uh, how about heading out to Shanghai because they're going to be celebrating it too? No. Oh, well, now you're that's talking. still a pass. <laughs> no, that's still a pass. Okay, all right. Uh, well, let's move on to one of my favorite segments uh, that we do on here. What? What? Why are you already going? Ooh, that's not that's not right. <laughs> this is a segment we came up with called "It Came <laughs> from the Parks." Uh, this is a place where we talk about some crazy things that have happened in the parks. I will give you guys all the headlines, <laughs> and you guys get to pick the one story that you want to talk about. Uh, we've already had a, a, a little bit of a sneak peek from um, from uh, from Allie about which one she wants to talk about. Like I've said before, it seems like the longer and crazier the headlines are for these, uh, or the m crazier the story, the longer the headline is. So. Uh, let's talk about what's going on this week in It Came From The Parks. The first one is uh, – hang on a second. It is – this one. Guest sneaks into Native American Village at Disneyland. Um, I'm going to hope that this was not Allie that was doing this. It was uh, not me. <laughs> drunk man makes fun of disabled guests at Walt Disney World Bar and gets a beat down – Maybe from Pete Carney. You can tell us about that later. Florida man sues Disney after Magic Kingdom ferry boat crash hurls him into trash can. That's the kind of headline I'm talking about right there. But before the show, Allie was wanting to talk about a speaker falls in the guest pathway near Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland. And because you've already kind of claimed that one. And again, you guys can talk about any of them that you want to. Everybody can talk about the same one. But Allie, when I saw this headline, I was like, Thinking, I think the thing, same thing everybody was. Again, what's happening? Because yeah, we had another was... <laughs> one fall before. Yeah, a couple months ago. I think it was in October. It was. It, this was Friday for all day Star Wars day. It was really, really windy that day, and it had been raining. So ground saturated. But, of course, this happens in the hour that I'm sitting at Ballast Point. Like, just put me under one of those so I can get some Disney money. <laughs> Kidding, of course. But kind of. Um but just crazy, like, how are we, like, we have earthquakes and all of this stuff out here. Like, how is stuff tipping over? I don't understand. That seems like something that maybe we need to go back in and just reevaluate. Because twice in six months is wild to me. And not so I well. heard, I heard all the poles are able to bend over if their volume goes too low, just to get it a little closer to the guest. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to call shenanigans on that, Peter. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Got me. Ah, I don't man. think it's true. There's always one every week. Lawyered. Um, so, uh, Pete, you've seen the options. Which one do you would you like to uh, speak to uh, with some 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 passion um, and knowledge? I don't know. I was going to say I'll take the one nobody wants or I'll do one line on each one. I don't care. Whatever you want. Uh, I like them all. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, okay. We'll go to Shannon. We'll finish with you. Shannon, which one do you like? Uh, I like hopping into the Native American area because, I mean, it's everyone's dream to hop in and sit amongst those scenes, yes. right? Any scene in any attraction. But you have to go into that knowing that you're never going to step foot in the Disney park ever again, right? You put that public yeah. on, the in on the internet and clearly this person is not a Disney fan, at least I would assume. Um, but yeah, I mean, good, good on them. They're living out my dream that I will never uh, do. <laughs> what we well, doing? you know what? You make a great point there. Like if there was one thing you were going to do before you could <laughs> never be in a Disney park again, yeah. this would not be it for me. Like this, oh, would not no. even, <laughs> this wouldn't even be top 10. Sorry. I would, I would jump off of, uh, uh out of the doom buggy and run around the inside of the haunted mansion. Probably that's Ooh, something good I choice. always wanted to do. Um, I would run backstage uh, and just like, you know, see everything I could see backstage that I haven't been able to go down in the Utilidor. Just like go out in a blaze of fury. <laughs> like, I don't know why sneaking into the, the, um, the Native American village was the thing to do. All right, Pete, what you got? Well, you've had some time to think about it. What, which one do you want to talk about? All you can talk about all of them if you want. 
Well, I was going to say, we also had someone sneak into the Indian Village here at Walt Disney World uh, last year. Uh, um, I don't oh, know if bear. it was his Indian name or if it was actually a black bear, but black bear oh. snuck into the Indian Village. <laughs> Um, and of course, I mean Native American. I don't know what we're supposed to say, but I, Native American village. I love everybody, and uh, I'm all about the peace. But yeah, I kind of agree with Shannon. Like, whenever I go by it on the train, I'm like, I wish this was like one day a week was a walkthrough attraction where I could kind of just like walk. Like, there's so many cool little details that I pick up every new time I ride the train because I'm staring at the one area super hardcore compared to a different area the week before. Um, I'm just, I, I, uh, I don't know. The other stories are kind of ridiculous. Like people suing people, uh, I'm sorry, people suing Disney over random accidents. Like when you go on the ferry, like what a waste, what a throwaway. I don't want to talk about that. Um, yeah, he went, he went, he went from bash to trash, whatever the story was. Um, the man got beat up for making fun of a disabled person. I don't think we should handle, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm a nonviolent person, but I'm, uh, I do believe in discipline, especially when someone does something as awful as that. So, uh yeah i mean would i have stopped the people i don't know if there were kids around maybe uh but that's really all my hot takes i uh i just want to know if ali had to pick you could only ride test track all day or you only could do the scavenger hunt in star wars for a day what would you do i would i would do the scavenger hunt because at least i can drink no. <laughs> wow that is not where i thought that was going uh all right, so that's it came from the park. Thank you guys for doing that. Somebody was like, hey, this is two weeks worth of headlines. This was all in the past week. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So uh, one thing I did want to point out about this one guy here is that when I looked at this picture, I thought of John C. <laughs> McKinley uh, from uh, from Scrubs. It, it, is there not – like do they not look similar? I don't know. No. Maybe is it – it's not. Okay, I'm just uh, – yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I thought they looked right. exactly like before you got to be yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe. It could be that way. Uh, all right, so let's go through uh, these a little bit faster since we're kind of running out of time here. One of them is that there's a more aggressive Soren uh, that we have a patent for. I don't know how you came up with this is a more aggressive Soren, but the patent is basically showing <laughs> – uh, this death trap here, which I don't even know how this works. That's kind of crazy the way that that looks like it almost brings you up top high and brings you back down. I don't know what we would do with this, um, but I love that we're calling it a more aggressive Soren. Uh, let's do this lightning uh, round. Shannon, thoughts on this one? Yeah, thumbs up. Let's make it more aggressive. I think it would be a trip for everyone. It's about time. But they want, they wouldn't put this into the existing one. They'd use it for something else. What would you think that they would use it for? What IP would fit a more aggressive Soren? Uh, <laughs> the Sully Sullenberger story. We're going down. Like, I, I mean, what? No, riding no? on Aladdin's carpet, maybe. Okay. Pete, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, again, more everything. I do like thrill rides. Um, I love Soren. I'm one of those few that can ride it a million times. Uh, this does look, I was going to say, any attraction that maybe you're riding, you know, flat, and then you go off a cliff, or you go into a, a fall of some type, and then you could watch that fall, or that could happen slower when you're vertical with those chairs moving, and then going back to a flat uh, horizontal surface. Yeah, this is a uh, give me more new stuff. This is great. Anything new is fun. Gotcha. And yeah. uh, Ali, maybe it, maybe this is the yeah, our experience. <laughs> maybe actually, that's not a horrible idea. I'm with Pete. Yeah, more everything, change it up. Soren's wonderful. If it's a little more aggressive, Soren, I'm here for that. Okay. I just wouldn't uh, say, I hope this is more intense, like, I don't know if I'm going to say this the right way, but, like, physically and not more intense on the screen, because I feel like those yeah. those rides really walk a fine line with motion sickness for guests, and I feel like yeah. Soren's right in the sweet spot, that if yeah. it gets, if it mixes you up too much, you're going to have people getting sick on the, on the attraction, so... I hope that it walks that same line Soren walks now of, you know, one person per hour might feel a little queasy and not one every ride needs to run to a, a trash can. Well, and again, I don't think this is something they're going to swap out Soren's mechanics right now. They'd use it for something else. But no, I but like, I'm just giving I'm, you the same thing. I'm using your analogy. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm picturing, yeah. like, like how could you put this in Casita in the new Beyond Big Thunder yeah. or, I mean, in the tropical uh, the tropical Americas, like, you know, uh, flying over the village? I don't know. But what if you go uh, off the like, cliff? 
Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, but this is not what we're seeing for like that King Thanos attraction. So I feel like they've got to have something in mind for that. Hopefully they we get to see it, but we'll see. Uh, let's move on to Joe's back. I feel like everyone teased us as Joe Rode is coming back to do Imagineering. Well, guess what? He's not. He's coming back to teach Imagineers <laughs> how to be Imagineers, and he is returning. Uh, Shannon, this is a good thing, right? Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I think everyone got so excited. I don't yeah. care how small of a part he's playing, just to have him back and having Imagineering be in the spotlight after they've been, you know, kind of shuttered, for lack of a better term, for the last few years. So we love to see Joe back. I mean, I think everyone would drop to the floor if he actually came back to work for Imagineering. But yeah. It makes me happy for the next generation too. If that he's teaching this upcoming, like yeah. that makes me my heart happy for future generations. <laughs> Even if like they don't yeah. have the budget or the creative power he did, just for them to hear the stories. Like back in my day, like I, it, what a, what an amazing <laughs> experience that must be. But uh, well, don't you see him coming in and them going, "Oh, Joe, could you show us a little bit more what you mean by that?" And then he starts like whipping up some plans for something, and you're like, <laughs> yes. "Oh, uh huh, uh huh, I see that." Yeah, what you um, that? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what yeah, exactly. I was, yeah, I was actually sleeping next to a rhino this night, and I sketched this idea. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm here for it. I feel like that we all want that heyday yeah. of the Tony Baxter, the Joe Rody, the uh, you know, yeah. all of that stuff. But but Ali Bob Iger came back, and I had these feelings, and I'm like, are we there yet? Yeah, but Bob Iger, Joe Rody, Joe Rody yeah. is. Oh, yeah. I mean, Iger's done a lot of good, but Rody is just brilliant. Although yes, I do it, wish there was yeah. a class clown in the back of whatever class he was teaching day one where he was like, so you're going to fix the Yeti? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Got exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, let's move on to this pass holder situation. Uh, the VIP, the VI pass holder, <laughs> be very careful when you say that, uh, Day is returning to Walt Disney World this summer. The very first time I ever went to a VI pass holder night was with Peter Carney. It was an amazing night. Uh, May 1st through June 26th is when this is happening, and it says there will be exclusive offerings with limited time magnet, a lounge, discounts, and more. Um Allie, uh, are you coming out for this? Because we we're not we're no, not doing I just renewed my. Magic <laughs> oh, I just renewed my pass, my Florida pass. That got expensive. Holy crap! Um, no, I don't think I'm going to make it during that timeline. Yeah, but I, uh, when I was reading it, I'm like, the perks are a little sad for you guys. Like, it's just a magnet and a lounge, like for a month. A well, month excuse me. Something. Yes. Okay. But, yeah, well, I'm happy for you guys, but parade. like. <laughs> Or give us fireworks over a new land, or give us a new scavenger hunt, or new drinks at a great cantina. No, those were old. Or little, or little droids, or Sabine Wren, or oh, a droids, great, very yeah. complicated hunt game. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Even a truck holding two other trucks with character faces on them. Anything. Yes. Uh, May 1st through June 26th surprised me, Pete, that they would do this almost, it seems like, summer that they're doing this. Don't they usually do this off season? Yeah, I, but I feel like that's the new off season now because Disney summer starts in very early August, if not late July. We're, now we've seen food and wine start in late July, early August. We've seen Halloween start yeah. August seventh or tenth, whatever. So like now, if you're saying <laughs> Halloween season starts at the beginning of August and food and wine starts at the beginning of August, that means summer has got to be pushed forward. So I think they're filling in the gap for the new Disney summer. And that's what they're calling it. Join us on the weekdays at four for New Disney Summer. Make sure to make sure you have your uh, your what is it? Which is the pass? The the Pixie Pass? Which is the one that only lets you yeah. in like on Tuesdays? Um, the pixie Pass. <laughs> so um, as, as a uh, as a as a DVC person, this one was of interest to me, and I'm not sure I love the answer here. Is that we knew there was going to be a DVC lounge coming. I hope that doesn't mean they're getting rid of the one at Epcot and Imagination, but it would be nice if we could have a little bit of love uh, in you know for DVC lounges. And what they said was there's a rumor that the shooting arcade that's going to close forever at Magic Kingdom uh, for a new v DVC lounge. And I'm split on this one, Shannon, because. Because I, 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 I know you didn't want to talk about this one either, but I'm going to ask your opinion on this because you're not DVC. Are you going to miss the shooting gallery if this goes away? Because I love that it's there and I never go. That's the weird thing. Keep it. I don't want to go, but keep it. Like, do you feel the same way or no? No, absolutely. I want – I'm going to miss the shooting gallery. I absolutely am. 
But you know what? Disney, by making this a lounge, I may just suddenly change my mind and drop a couple thousand, you know, dollars, tens of thousands of no, dollars. You know. No, you won't. Oh. No, you won't. But if, if I you want would. to, I have a proposal. But if you want to, you can go and they'll give you a two hundred dollar gift card for leaving Done. your. But but here's the thing: <laughs> you're leaving your Disney day to go do a timeshare tour. Um, if I've already paid for the ticket for that day and my Genie Plus, then no, no, thank you. This isn't even going to fix everything if I go do that. But it's a thing that they're offering. Pete, what were you going to say? Oh no, I was going to say if the shooting gallery. Like this is where you got to get creative as, as you know, Imagineers. Don't lose both. Make one side behind opaque glass, and then the other side, the people can shoot into the lounge, and then like the salt spills, or like the water starts going off, or the tea kettle whistles, and like for 15 minutes, you don't know what's going on, and then that opaque wall becomes visible, and there's 40 kids lined up with rifles looking at you. That's an experience I'm into. Finally. Finally an experience that is worthy. Uh, Yeah. Now All right, you have my ten grand. You're welcome, or whatever it is. Yeah. What is it up to now? A hundred grand? I don't know. I, it's it's not cheap. Um, so uh, the next thing is uh, Halloween Horror Nights was announced, and again, we usually just talk about Disney Park stuff on on Park Center, but Halloween Horror Nights uh, 33 was announced, and Pete, it's coming in August. Like that was the thing that last year they started it in September, but already Disney was not so scary for at least a month before that. So is it Disney making them do this or is it because they need more space because there's more demand? Well, you've heard of New Disney Summer, but have you tried New <laughs> Epic Universal Summer starting one week after Disney starts theirs? No. Um, I think this is more ways of getting more revenue, right? Is that you can't go too much further past Halloween on HHN or Disney Christmas uh, Halloween parties. Uh, so the only thing you can do is go forward. And it's become kind of a lull time. I feel like more parents are taking their kids out of school for a week and coming during slower weeks or times that it's not so hot. And August is just so brutally hot that people are coming other times of the year, especially in Florida now. It's getting hotter and hotter every year. But... Now, if you're off from school in August and you can go to HHN and you can go to Mickey's Not So Scary and you can go to Food and Wine at Epcot, now you're like, oh, I don't have to take any days off from school. And a lot of the teachers in the Northeast, I know in other parts of the country, don't go back till Labor Day. They can come down and experience all of these things. And now Disney's getting and Universal's getting an extra $400 per family per day to do these special events and ticketed events. So I get it. I'm not, I mean, I don't love it. I hate, I don't know how these people wear Halloween costumes in August here. I am down to the least amount of clothing they'll let me into the parks with right now. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you're going to have to be there day one, man. Adventures by Carney. They'll be there. So, uh, you know, cut, lit and loose. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about right here is, uh, is for, for, for people who are big fans of It's a Small World, you've probably always thought to yourself, what would be the next iteration of small world if i could do anything what would make the most sense to do to it's a small world and in tokyo they went you know what let's make it marvel uh i mean i don't hate it but it doesn't seem to make any sense shannon thoughts i, I hate it <laughs> why why what it's temporary do the marvel people i mean there there has to be a pretty niche market for those who would appreciate this mashup right it's not me Ah, uh, Pete, you'd go to Tokyo for this, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, here's out of this world, um, which is what they should be calling it instead. Because it, it honestly is now a universal ride. Uh, you're, you're expanding beyond our world. It's yeah, a, not a small universe anymore. Um, and it, it's a knows? small world to do with, the with Groot. Yeah, I mean... I, I would, what do you travel by, like the James Webb telescope? Like, what, what, are, you, what are you sailing by? uh on this ride i don't know i like fun little layovers and stuff this one i'm kind of with like i wish that a little bit like what are you doing you had so many opportunities here what are you like this one had to be a joke like they pulled it out of a hat like good luck with this jim ah. i mean maybe i don't know uh, uh let me finish off with uh with ali uh, or something these you characters would do? were all created Pixar play pavilion next to Guardians at Epcot, and then they scratch the whole play pavilion, and they're like, "You guys want these cute little guardians for your ride?" And they're like, "Sure." 
I figured it out. This is how this is how they're going to do it. You're going to go through a boat that's going to take you from uh, one jump point to the next. That's got to be how that works, right? I don't know. Allie, finish us off there. I, it's interesting. I, I, yeah, I don't understand. Like, if this just cute, small little characters and gives you something new while you're going through the ride for locals, like, I'm okay with that. But it's it's a weird mashup. I, I don't get it. Weird choice. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for doing that. We went a little bit over tonight. We try to keep you into 60 minutes, but when we got Pete here, we go big. We go big. That's what we do. Uh, so uh, I want to first say thank you to our wigs, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. We love our wigs. Thank you guys for being members of the family. If you want to learn more about it, it's our Patreon program, and you can go to patreon.com forward slash WDWNT. Also, uh, I want to make uh, mention of uh, we are still live every Sunday night with Park Center uh, at 9 p.m., and we also have uh, – a little show called Deep in the Plus that happens Wednesday nights live at 9 p.m. This is our slate. Currently, we have uh, X-Men. Uh, we did we did Muppets Most Wanted. We're doing Disney's Wish this Wednesday night. And then uh, Cinderella. Shannon's coming back on yeah. to talk about Cinderella. Brandy. And then uh, my friend Maleka is going to be one. coming in from the cat from outer space. That's what she said. We did the, the one, one for like the animated one. And she got on there. She was like, I'm doing this, but I wish it was the Brandy version. And we were like, yeah. Well, okay. Well, I guess we're going to do the Brandy version. Oh, so, yeah, yes. so that's coming up. Uh, and, Peter, anything you'd like to, to, to talk about before we cut loose here? I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me back. I'm really excited. If anyone's into some fun vlogs around the theme parks, I have a small YouTube channel, Adventures by Carney. You feel free to check it out. But I, uh, I'm just so happy to be back, and thanks for supporting awesome shows like Park Center. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you are a member of our uh, Wigs group, you might have a post show after this. We would love to talk to you in our post show, a quick 15 minute post show after this. So thank you guys. Uh, and then again, hopefully you'll join us Wednesday night for Wish on Deep in the Plus and back here next Sunday night for another edition of Park Center. Thank you guys so much for, for being here and for hanging out with us on your Sunday night. Thank you guys on the panel here for taking time out of your Sunday to be on here and talk about Disney stuff. We appreciate you. Have a great week. We'll see you guys next time. Ding ding. Beep beep. Who got the keys to the Jeep? That's what.